my opinion, a good product owner makes a person who is able to listen very carefully to soak in what uh, people are expecting, uh, wishes, expectations, uh, visions, pictures in the client's head. It's important to understand and extract what's important for the project, for the tech, uh, but also taking care of everything else that's not so important. So that's between the lines. And of course, doing all this not only to, to the client, but also to the developers, to your team, to, to all the people in your team. Or a good PO, in my opinion, is basically a person that forms a bridge between business and tech making sure that both sides are happy and that both sides can do their work uh, first on and then with the product in the best possible way. In my opinion, the most fun part of being a PO is to dive into new areas, new fields, new topics constantly. So with a new project or with new big requirements, new um, topics uh, arise and you then have to get ahead of these topics, the challenges, the requirements, um, not only in tech, but also in business, in terms of people, culture. So when there's a new project, um, many things can happen. I mean, the, the, the fun part is to dive into that and to get ahead of these challenges to, in the end, have a product you and your team can be proud of. Um, my ownership style is uh, to be fair, sometimes micromanagement, to be honest, and sometimes less fair. Um, less fair, more in the direction of team and developers, uh, because I uh, put in the requirements um, and all the communication is condensed um, towards the team and they are in charge of finding the solution. In some projects, it definitely makes sense to be a micromanagement person, to um, document stuff, to help the client uh, really fill in all the gaps and uh, things we need and the information. And sometimes micromanagement there is the way to go for me, but not always, of course. Uh, depends on the scope and the meeting, I guess. So with the client, I tend to be leader of the meeting, basically, or of the process, so of the requirements engineering process. Um, I say what we need, what uh, the client should do, and mostly the client is very happy about this. Regarding the team, I, I'm the guy doing the tickets and um, doing the business side, and of course, some of the tech side, but the boss basically is the team, because I don't say how something should be implemented i just uh, say what's the goal behind this here it's a little bit different in terms of the amount of tech which is involved i guess so we have rather technical projects uh, rather back-end orientated projects so it's always good to have some technical knowledge uh, behind what you're doing and i think that's one of the differences um, i like at least in my opinion that's fairly cool to to be a little bit more tech orientated than only um, to to talk about requirements or stuff but also to do conceptions uh, solution architecture and so on in many of the projects actually it gets more and more technical so for a complex project with a lot of integrations, it's very helpful when you can build data contracts, you can talk about interfaces. Um, it's It gets fairly technical uh, in, in some of the projects, with others, not so much. One tip that's not so special and it's pretty obvious, but it's good to emphasize it, I think, is to expect the unexpected. It sounds a little bit off, but in in the end, it means that everything should be communicated, clarified and written, written down because there's always some gaps, something uh, you didn't think of, you didn't prepare for. So the more you are prepared, the more you are filling these gaps beforehand uh, while you're working, uh, the less work will appear later on. Documentation and communication and really agreeing on, on a consensus, which is defined that's one thing that makes the work easier daily and in, in, in the daily life.